In this video we're going to be taking a look at making gradient textures so that's going to be like two or more colors as a material instead of just a single color like we've used in the previous videos. So to start off I'm going to get rid of the default cube and I'm going to go add mesh and I'm going to choose the monkey. I'm going to zoom in a bit and we can see this is really rough at the moment so I'm going to right click and shade smooth and then I'm going to go into the modifiers tab and I'm going to add a modifier and I'm going to choose subdivision surface. And I can turn up the levels viewport up one more time. So that's going to make it nice and smooth. So next I'm going to go down to the material tab and I'm going to click new to add a new material. And I can just double click and rename this gradient. So now to get access to more options for the material than what we've got in this list here. We need to go to the top and we need to go into the shading tab. So I can click shading and then I can zoom in a bit and then we can see that we've got the usual settings here but we've also got these pins here where we can plug in other nodes so the first thing we need to do is go to add and then I'm going to search texture coordinates and then just left click and drop that in over here at the left and then I'm going to add another one and I'm going to click search again and I'm going to choose mapping I can zoom in a bit with the scroll wheel and then I can click the middle mouse button and move around like this. So I want to plug in generated to vector and then after that I need to add another, another node so I'll go search and this one is going to be separate XYZ and then I can plug the vector into that. We'll see that each of these sockets are colour coded to help you work out which um, socket you need to plug them into. Okay, so what we're going to do with this is we just want the Z axis, like up and down. So we're going to go add and then type in ramp for the colour ramp. And then we can just plug the Z into here. And then the colour just goes into our base colour. So now we've got this and I can adjust the points like this. We've got different modes here where it says linear. We can change that to ease, cardinal, B spline, constant. So constant's gonna give you like a, a really sharp line might be interesting if you were going to do an animation where it moves like this. I'm going to go with ease I think because that looked the most uh, gentle transition and then I can just zoom in a bit I can click this black color and then I can go to the bottom and I can change this to a color by dragging this up to the top and then picking any color so I think I might go with like An orange color and then I can click the other color and I can change this to maybe pink and again we can adjust the position of the colors and if we wanted we could have a third color so maybe I'll click the plus and I'll drag this over here and then I'll change this to maybe blue like that and then I can put this spaced out a bit better. So we've got our three colours. And I'll just go back to the layout tab. And I'll just go back on the material preview mode there. And then we can see that we've got our gradient material. But I want to take this one step further. And what I'm going to do is make the top shiny and the bottom not shiny. So we're going to affect the roughness. So I'll go back to shading. And all we need to do is add a new color ramp. So type in ramp. And then we can just connect the Z to this one and the color to the roughness. And I need to flip 
I'm going to flip these around the other way around. And now we can see that it's shiny on the top, but not on the bottom. We could also make it metallic if we wanted. So I'm going to go back into layout and then I can go to render properties, enable ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflections. Inside these nodes we can always change the, the mapping over here which is going to change the location. So we can move the Z position. We can also change the rotation. We can change the position of the, the roughness gradient here. And of course we can always change the colours. So there we go. So I hope you've managed to follow along with this video okay and I hope you've learned something. I've got a load more videos planned so keep an eye out for them. Thanks a lot for watching.